Okay. Yeah, the only okay. Sorry. This is going to be to just start, record it, and then we could just send a message that we had to post it after. I mean, if, if, mm -hmm. we, can, if we can't get it live. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, I'm going to defer to Neil Goldman to run the meeting, as I have some personal uh, items that may require me to leave a couple of times. So th I, th I thought that would be less interruption. So, Neil, go ahead. Mr. President, thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order, and can I have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? You have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, the agenda is adopted. Uh, let us now uh, move to the Pledge of Allegiance. And Dr. Harbeck, would you be so kind as to lead us in the pledge? Sure. Please put oh, your hand on your heart. Oh, hold on. Oh, can, can you hold on one second? I'm sorry. Uh, Quan, can you please give me sharing capabilities, please? Then Wendy. Okay. Okay, there you go. Let's go. All right. Hand on our hearts. Ready? Begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, the flag of, the of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the to Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you, everyone. As we begin our meeting tonight, uh, we have a special presentation where usually we get to do this live every year, but unfortunately, our circumstances this year preclude us from doing this. But we do want to still take time out to recognize, as we do every year, the Wiseburn uh, Board of Trustees and the staff and the community want to recognize individuals who've dedicated a significant part of their career to our wonderful district. These employees have served as a support for our staff, students, and families, and are a major reason that Wiseburn is such a special place. So while we wish we could get everybody, uh, give everybody hugs and shake hands and high fives, we'll do so virtually, um, and uh, still want to take time out to share our gratitude and appreciate for the significant contributions they've made over so many years. Our uh, group being recognized tonight uh, includes two health clerks who are obviously so vital at this time, an aide and one of our teachers. So let me now turn it over to Dr. Silvers and uh, the recognition segment of this meeting. Thank you, Dr. Goldman. I'm, uh, we actually have uh, some pre-recorded uh, video that we're, gonna, that we're gonna share. So we have our principals that have sent uh, recognition of their employees. I believe we're gonna start with Anza, Mr. Paredes, Mr. Paredes and then we'll move on to Hugo um, over at Burnett. So ready? cue it up, Wendy, you have it? Yeah. Yep, I'm ready. No sound. Hold on. I want to. I'm going to play that again because I want to make sure the sound is right. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. okay. Tell me. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank the governing board and the superintendent of the Wiseburn Unified School District for allowing me this opportunity to recognize two employees that together have a combined 60 years of service to our district. The first person that I will be recognizing tonight is Mrs. Indu Barwa, also known as Mrs. B. Before becoming an employee of the district, Mrs. Barwa volunteered at Juan Cabrillo Elementary School where her sons attended. She started her Wiseman career as a playground aide, then as a substitute instructional aide, and then a permanent aide at Cabrillo. She also worked a year as an assigned aide to Burnett School. In 2004, she transferred to Wanda Anza, where she continues to serve students as an instructional aide. Ms. B is a very caring individual. She always makes sure to check on students prior to, to teaching a lesson, always with a simple question such as, how are you doing today? If she finds that a student isn't doing too well, she will do what she can to help them. Her care for others doesn't stop with students. If she learns that someone at Anza is going through something, she will always check on them as well. A fun fact about Mrs. B is that she has fruit trees in her backyard, and many of us at Anza look forward to her, the latest pickings. My children and my personal favorite are the pomegranates. Mrs. Bodwa, thank you for your 25 years of service to our district. The second person that I will be recognizing tonight is Mrs. Chio Miyahara. Our, our, her, our 
students and families call her Miss Chiu. Miss Chiu started as an ANZA parent. She was quickly drafted to be a volunteer and later an ANZA employee. Ms. Chiu was initially hired by Wiseman as a substitute aide. In 1984, she became a library, uh, a library clerk. She also provided support as a substitute general clerk. In 1986, she was hired as a health clerk at ANZA where she continues to serve students. Ms. Chiu has built long lasting, multiple generation relationships with our families. Till this very day, families that, that are still present and families that have left, bring their newborn children to meet Miss Chiu. Miss Chiu mm -hmm. grabs those children, she hugs them, and she glows, and then she loves to share stories about, about the families when they were at ANZA. Miss Chiu is hardworking, dependable, and willing to support in any capacity. In fact, every year she takes the lead and works with our PTA and community to put together holiday gift baskets that are then distributed to families that need a little extra help during the holidays. Ms. Chio is very caring, and students know that. They will always go see her when they need a little TLC. Ms. Chio, thank you for your 35 years of service. Thank you, everybody. Good evening, Board President Mora, School Board Trustees, Superintendent Dr. Silvers, and Cabinet. My name is Hugo Rios, and I am the proud principal of Peter Burnett Elementary. I would like to take a moment to honor two very important individuals of the Burnett community. I would like to start with Ms. Mary Grace Gramatico, who has served the Wiseburn community for 25 years. Mary Grace started with the Wiseburn School District as a temporary instructional aide assigned to Juan Cabrillo Elementary. A few years later, she transferred to Burnett. Besides working as an instructional aide, she also served as a substitute playground aide. In the spring of 2000, she became the health clerk assigned to Peter Burnett. Mary Grace was named the 2019-2020 Classified Employee of the Year. Mary Grace has been an amazing asset to the Burnett community. Our students feel safe under her care and our families are always thankful for her gentle touch and professionalism. The next is Mr. Rob Norman, who has served the Wiseburn School District for 30 years. Mr. Norman was hired at the start of the 1989-1990 school year as a seventh grade teacher at Dana Middle School. In the fall of 2000, Mr. Norman transferred to Peter Burnett, where he began to teach fourth grade. Mr. Norman is beloved by his students. His students enjoy the way Mr. Norman carries himself in the classroom and his sense of humor. Each day, Mr. Norman brings with him his love of teaching and his joy of helping students learn. Mr. Norman carries with him a wealth of knowledge in the area of science and math. On behalf of the Burnett community of teachers, students, and parents, we would like to thank both Ms. Mary Grace and Mr. Norman for their many years of service. Thank you. Well, thank you for those tributes. Uh, on behalf of the Wiseburn Board of Trustees, we are honored to recognize and appreciate your exceptional work. Let's, why don't we give them a hand, absolutely, uh, for the contributions they've made. I think from the board's perspective, every one of us has probably had, in, those folks have impacted our families in some way. So thank you all for the amazing contribution you've made and the, and the commitment you made to our district. Thank you very much. Neil, I had one, one quick comment. I also wanted to obviously uh, acknowledge and congratulate all the recipients uh, here before us. Um, I also wanted to spend, send a special note to Ms. Chio, who has served two generations of the Martinez family. Please come over here, uh, boys. Uh, she happened to serve both, both, both the my boys and I. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, send a special congratulations to her for her 35 years. So that's all. Thank you. That's Congratulations. Congratulations. Any other comments? Again, big thank yous to our honorees tonight. Let's now move to public comments. Ms. Zubaki, I believe you have some uh, comments for, to share with us. I do, I have two public comments this evening. I'll start with the first. It's to the Wiseburn Superintendent Board of Trustees from David and Ann Webb, Holly Glenn homeowners. For the last several months, the parking lot has and continues to be used a, as a public playground with adults, teens, and children showing little or no regard for wearing masks and or social distancing. Parents are seen unloading carloads of screaming, yelling kids along with their playthings, bikes, trikes, skateboards, scooters, some motorized, with their noisy play on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Despite the very visible signs stating that such activities are prohibited, 
These people show absolutely no regard to the comfort of the neighbors and our home is the most affected by the noise, which goes on until sometimes after dark. Typically, the activity starts in the late morning, escalates around 3 p.m., and frequently lasts until after dark. The activity and noise level is most egregious on the weekends and has become so loud that we cannot enjoy the peace of our own backyard. It has also made working at home more difficult as we must have windows closed during hot weather to try to block out the constant noise. The skateboarders are perhaps the most inconsiderate and have been a constant problem even before COVID-19 erupted. They slam their skateboards against or near the wall separating our home and the school parking lot, then proceed to hoop and yell out their heroics. In the last week, a horde of young adults were playing a loud form of football from approximately, approximately 5 p.m. until past dark. The structure of the school parking lot acts like an echo chamber, further amplified by onshore breezes that we depend upon for cooling our home. The current situation is frankly out of control. Having asked parents, children, and young adults to keep their noise down only results in rude discord and foul language from those we politely ask to subdue the noise. We have contacted the Hawthorne Police several times for help, as instructed by Wendy Tsubaki, Wiseburn Unified School District Assistant to the Superintendent's Office on May 13. Ms. Tsubaki informed us that the school campus, including the parking lot, is closed to the general public and that no one should be allowed on the grounds and that we should call the police if we are being disturbed. Hawthorne Police Department Desk Sergeant Shimano's on May 19, 2020 response was, we can't do anything about your problem short of pressing charges, not something we wanna do. Additionally, when trying to ameliorate the situation in the past, the police have informed us that this is a school district issue to resolve. It would seem logical and courteous that if, as Ms. Tsubaki's statement reflects the school district rules, some kind of enforcement needs to be implemented by the school district. Understandably, the police viewed this as a low priority problem. I would hope the school district would agree that these constant disturbances to their tax paying neighbors is unacceptable and deserves to be addressed. Obviously, signs that have been put up are completely ignored by the public who have turned the parking lot into their own playground, bike track, skate park, and gridiron. For the protection of the school and its neighbors and the public, a temporary security guard would seem appropriate. Remember the golden rule and the motto of our town, city of good neighbors. We implore you, please do the right thing and mitigate this unbearable problem that perceivably will get worse as we head into the summer. Respectfully submitted, David and Ann Webb. Mr. Ms. Webb, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, we will look into this, thank you. Wendy, I believe there's another I have a second public comment tonight. This is Ann Webb from the Wiseburn Education Foundation was today notified of proposed staffing changes at Da Vinci High School that may jeopardize the music program at our high school. WEF's mission continues to include funding music and performing arts programs for all of our Wiseburn students and believes that Wiseburn is best served by a shared K-12 music program. WEF hopes that the musical instruments it has purchased to serve the Da Vinci music program will once again be played by our high school students. We would like to thank Mr. Toby Harwell for being a great partner to WEF, and we hope to continue to support Mr. Hartwell in his future endeavors here in Weisburn. Wendy, I think it was, uh, just to clarify, I think it's Ann Tittle, right? It's president of WEF, Ann Tittle, not I'm so Ann sorry, Webb. yes. I'm so sorry, yes. It was Ann Tittle. And thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you for sharing. And again, we will explore this. Thank you. Any more public comments, Wendy? That's all I have at this time. All right. But let's move to from the board. Uh, Ms. Kaneda, let's start with you. All right, thank you, Dr. Goldman. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to talk yet. I need a drink of water. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Nisha Dougal to the Weisburn uh, staff here, to our community. So glad that we were able to um, uh, add you to our team. Looking forward to working with you in the future and uh, uh, appreciate your interest and now this new dedication to Weisburn. Thank you very much. As the uh, uh, helper at uh, Dana while uh, our principal was out, helper is probably a uh, bad word, but uh, anyway, as assisting at Dana while our principal was out on leave, um, we had a chance to see firsthand how important uh, your skills are and how relevant. So we're looking forward to, to working with you in the future. So thank you. 
I uh, want to thank uh, Dave and Blake for working on the budget um, uh, opportunities and challenges that we have coming forward uh, to the district. Um, no matter what the state patch passes in the way of a budget for education, we know we have a lot of challenges uh, going forward. I want to let our community know that we take these challenges very seriously, that we um, are concerned about safety, we're uh, concerned about making sure our budget can, that we can make ends meet, uh, and about our staff and just the students, the whole thing in a pandemic situation with reduced budget, um, what a challenge. So uh, we're up for the challenge uh, and we want to do our best for the community. So we're looking forward to working as a team to do that. And I think the Weisburn team is uh, ready, ready to go. So here we go. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Ms. Martinez. Hello, I also want to take the opportunity to welcome uh, Nisha. Congratulations on your new role. And I certainly look forward to working with you as well. Um, with, with regards to uh, Joanne's uh, comment here, I'll keep it short. It is challenging, challenging times. I really do appreciate the hard work of, of of, of staff. This is kind of uncharted territory, um, you know, uh, right now. So a lot of, a lot of just developing stories with regards to how we're going to um, roll this out, I guess. If you look at, a, a, I know there's a lot of talk right now. I shared some information recently with Blake about fall uh, school reopening and what that may look like. Um, along with uh, the budget challenges that Joanne mentioned and, and just the, the fact of the um, anxiety uh, among among everybody, right? Teachers, parents, administration, and staff. It, it, it truly is going to require everybody to work together, and we'll get through it. That's that's been the motto of the Wiseburn community, and and uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get the, we'll get through this together. Uh, um, certainly, um, uh, we'll continue to move forward. And that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Nelson. Mr. Banuelos. Yes, thank you, Dr. Goldman. I wanted to share just a couple of items as well with uh, with the rest of the board and and our community as a whole. Um, for those watching uh, uh, on YouTube, those live broadcast, just wanted to share with everyone that it is really, really important to the Wiseman Board that we open schools in a very safe and uh, and proper manner. And what that looks like is really being a challenge. Um, uh, because we are getting some guidance at some point from different agencies, not always coordinated. And we're looking at our staff, uh, Dr. Dr. Silvers and the administration to help us and guide us and having conversations as to what school could look like for opening in August, or is it uh, a continued online learning or some sort of a hybrid? I really wish we had all of the answers, uh, but unfortunately at this point we do not. We're still looking for those answers. And one of the very key and important items is really to solicit input from the community. So I know that we have a survey out right now, and I believe the results or the deadline for everyone to help us and, and please give us your input. We definitely wanna hear it. Uh, I believe it was um, uh, either today or yesterday and, and possibly Dr. Silvers is gonna give us an update a little bit later in his, in his presentation as to what some of those results are. But I'm really um, looking forward to receiving that taking those comments into account as we begin to, um, to deliberate and talk about what school could look like. It is an incredibly important item for all of us um, and uh, we're gonna take all the input seriously. Um, additionally, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Silvers for participating in the uh, LACO Superintendents Forum on uh, school reopening. I know with all the additional duties and responsibilities, that's also no small feat, but thank you, uh, Dr. Silvers, for being a part of that leadership and being in the forefront to get us the most accurate information from which we can make a decision on. And thank you for, for participating in that community. It truly benefits uh, all of our students in Wiseburn. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. And, th and that's all I have, Dr. Goldman. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for reminding us that we do need input. We are getting input. And uh, I know Dr. Silvers is going to be mentioning in his uh, comments about an upcoming uh, input session that will be ongoing as well. Uh, Mr. Mora. 
Thank you. I think uh, the board has had some very excellent comments. Um, you know, the good thing about this board is that we always do the best we can for our students and the kids and the families in our, in our district. Um, and we will continue to think that way and make the best decisions that we can. Um, the fall is, is going to be tricky because we're not out of this yet and we have to weigh in and as the changes happen with the coronavirus and how uh, reopening what that does to our society, we're not sure yet. And as we see that happening, we will adjust accordingly. Um, so just know that we do have everyone's best interest in mind and we will make the best decisions that we can. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mora. This is an evolving time. It is an evolving health time. Safety and rules are changing. It's an evolving economic time. We don't know answers yet. Uh, we are going to certainly be looking for those and uh, we are having ongoing deliberations about the best course of action we can take and hope to update you more in future meetings. Let's turn now to the cabinet, uh, the chief business official, Mr. Wilson. Help, uh, take it away. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to say we had uh, had the opportunity to work with the budget oversight committee last week. Um, I know that uh, based on those conversations, we're gonna we're gonna you know address any budget shortfalls in a collaborative manner. Um, we have very bright minds, and uh, uh, it's gonna be difficult times. But uh, I know uh, you know with teamwork and collaboration, we'll get through it. Um, uh, a little glimmer of hope as we're unraveling more of the May revise. There's about $4.4 billion in federal funds uh, that wasn't uh, originally addressed. And right now the proposal in the legislature is to allocate that uh, for districts that receive concentration grant money. And what concentration grant money is for districts that have a um, unduplicated people uh, percentage count, which is uh, free and reduced um, English language learners and foster youth, foster youth. If they have uh, 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 over 55% of their students make up those three um, areas, uh, they're called concentration grants. And the way the, the, the allocation right now is set is that it would only go to those school districts. So there's, there's been quite a, uh, a lot of pushback from other legislatures saying, hey, that's not fair. It should be allocated uh, you know, more equitable. And so as those debates go on in Sacramento, hopefully that's good news. And that'll be uh, you know, some additional funding, much needed funding uh, next year. So as, it, as they continue to debate in Sacramento, we'll bring you the latest information that we have, but uh, didn't, have, didn't have that information at the last meeting and we wanted to share that with you now. Thank you. And we're still hoping for federal funding as well, correct? Correct, correct. All right. Um, thank you, Dave. That's it. Assistant Superintendent Student Services, Dr. Rang. Good evening, everyone. So I have two shout outs and one announcement. <laughs> so the first shout out is really to our students and our parents and our staff for continuing to access our amazing counseling services during this time. It is uncertain. There is a lot going on in our community. And I just want to compliment our students for reaching out to us and asking for what they need and also for um, continuing to support um, the collaboration um, that we're doing. So thank you to them. The second shout out is to um, one of our outstanding psychologists, Stephanie R. And I always um, have a hard time pronouncing her last name, but I'm going to give it a shot. It's Rush Atakan can COVID. That's why we call her Stephanie R. She's done an amazing job um, putting together with the special education team training for 39 classified staff, instructional aides that are supporting our students with special needs this last several months. And they've been participating in Rethink, a partner module program that really um, fine tunes training related to students' behavior. And so a shout out to her for the great work um, collaborating and coordinating and making sure our instructional aides are accessing these wonderful training opportunities. So um, exciting things going on for staff training despite you know, this time. Um, and lastly, just wanna invite the board to our Success Learning Center virtual graduation on uh, June 9th at 11 a.m. I sent you all a link um, just a few minutes ago. If you're able to pop in, it'd be great to have you. We'll be graduating five high school students from various schools, Da Vinci, Torrance, Redondo, El Segundo, and then promot promoting some of our other students up um, from Weisburn and uh, 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 Inglewood. So you're welcome to come. It'll be a great event. Um, and that's it for my report tonight. 
good deal. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the shout outs. Those programs are not only reaching out to our students, but to our families and really appreciate it. Thank you very much to them. Um, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, Dr. Harbeck. Hi, good evening. I want to give the board an update on our promotion ceremonies going on in both our elementary schools and our middle school. Uh, all our principals have been working hard on creatively putting together memorable experiences for our students and for their parents. They've been working with their PTAs and their staffs to really uh, think about what's best for the kids uh, in this time of transition. So at Burnett and Anza, they've collaborated to kind of have a matched uh, promotion uh, ceremony where they're going to have a, re a pre recorded or live, they're thinking about live stream, but they want to pre recorded videos. They'll have speeches by the principal, by the assistant principal, by the student council president. Uh, teachers are going to read each of the students' names and have their pictures shown on the video. Um, and then on top of that, the P PTAs have designed yard signs that the students can pick up along with their fifth grade promotion t shirts and yearbooks. So that's all going to happen. It's very, I think, a nicely put together package. And then for Dana, a little bit different. Um, they're also going to have a pre recorded ceremony, but they'll have speech by Dr. Silvers, our superintendent and the principal, as well as a message from our board of trustees. Looking forward to having department awards also presented by the teachers. This is historically where we do this. Um, every eighth grade student will have their name read and their picture uh, framed in the video. And uh, the video is going to be, I think, uploaded to YouTube through a secure link for families to access on June 11th. The eighth graders will also be picking up their promotion items to include a yard sign to celebrate um, their promotion, panoramic picture of the entire class, which was taken before school closure, which is terrific. <laughs> They're gonna have that. And also their eighth grade t-shirts and that's funded by, our, by the ASB. So really nicely put together. I think um, parents will be pleased with this and, and the students as well. Uh, second, I just wanna to speak tonight on the um, agenda. You have a conference request for Jessica Kim and Haley Murray, who come from Dana Middle School, they'll be participating in some online training through PLTW. And uh, both teachers have stepped up for this. It's a computer science for innovators and makers with coding. And this is Dana's means of, this was planned before, and then PLTW decided to continue with the training, even during school closure, and uh, do it online. So they're expanding their PLTW program over there at Dana, with two more teachers working with Andy, this also aligns with our partnership between Dana and DV with the Society of Women Engineers. And that's how that's all gonna to play together. So just wanna point that out and a shout out for Dana. And then I'm gonna close tonight uh, by thanking our Weisburn teachers who had a great turnout on the distance learning survey that we did put out, as well as our Weisburn families. From our families, we had over a thousand response, responses to our survey. We've never seen a, a response like that before. Um, so we're just so pleased to have that, that it, they all took the time to uh, read through the survey and to really uh, provide their input. I know Dr. Silvers is going to be following up on that, but just want to thank everyone for that as we move forward with our plans for next year. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Harbeck. Dr. Silvers, our superintendent. All right. Thank you, Dr. Goldman. I, you know, first I want to apologize um, on behalf of technology to uh, the board of trustees and to our public that we're, we're not able to have this live streamed right now. Um, because of technical difficulties with YouTube and Zoom. So we are recording this um, and we'll get it posted as soon as we can uh, right after the meeting. So I uh, just wanted to, to apologize uh, for that. Um, I also wanna share uh, that, you know, th this whole process that we're, where we sit right now, we've learned so much over, over the last, uh, gosh, it seems like six months, but, but I think it's been, uh, you know, it's been about two or three months and, and we've learned so much um, as a district uh, we've collaborated so much um, as it relates to distance learning, uh, to student needs, to mental health support, um, food service, uh, basically all aspects of our district, uh, technology, infrastructure, and custodial support, um, all, the thing, all the things that make, um, that make us tick. Um, and it's just everybody's piece has played a, an important role in this, um, in this process. So um, I just, I just want to share that. And as we, as we roll out any plans that we do for next year, that we're going to take into consideration all those things. I'll show, share a little bit more specifically in a, in a minute here. Um, I do want to just share a little bit about the budget too. I want to sort of echo what, what, what uh, Davis has shared with us um, and really urge our politicians. I won't get into the, into the uh, sort of the meat of the budget yet, but I just want to urge our politicians um, and share sort of in the, uh, in a call from all of our local districts and districts up and down the state and the county of Los Angeles um, to really do what's right for children 
um, and uh, to be responsible with our children and, and to sort of leave the politics at the door. And, and sometimes we get into this game of, of politics in Sacramento and Washington, D.C., um, and it's just a really, really tough time right now. And, and I'm just urging our politicians and we'll be sending letters um, to our local legislature and, and, and also up to, to Sacramento and to Washington, D.C. to help support schools and school funding. Um, it's just so important. So wanted to share that. Um, I also want to um, share our RAP committee. So RAP, W-R-A-P. Um, again, I think I shared it at the last meeting. It's another acronym. And, you know, we just love acronyms. It's uh, the Wiseburn reopening advisory partnership. Um, and, and we saw this as a chance to bring people together uh, from various, various stakeholder groups together. Uh, right now we have 43, I believe, uh, folks that are on this committee now. It includes parents, teachers, classified staff, um, administrators, as we look at what's gonna happen next year. And, and some, of the, some of the pathways that we're looking at is number one, schedule. What's our schedule gonna look like next year? Um, just to comment and uh, to piggyback off what Dr. Harbeck shared, in our parent survey, uh, we've received seven uh, of the thousand uh, respondents. Seventy percent of our families are basically indicating that they'd like to see a hybrid model, that they'd send their, stu their students or their children to school uh, with some sort of hybrid model. Twenty percent uh, would like, just over twenty percent, would like an online program only, um, especially as, as there's no vaccine and no, uh, no cure or treatment. Um, and then the other 10 is sort of a, a different, diff a different opinion and or just need more clarification as to what next year will look like before they make a decision. So um, what, we, what we see to be true is that we're gonna need two models uh, to roll out next year, uh, significant numbers that, that are looking at both models. So we've had, a, had some time uh, with the help of, of Dr. Harbeck and Dr. Dougal um, as we've worked through, and, and Wendy, I, I can't leave Wendy out of this, as, as we plan pretty much every day to try and get ready for our first meeting on June 1st. Um, and I want to thank the families and the parents that are involved. I'd also like to thank our staff, our teachers, and classified employees that are involved in this. Um, as we look at our schedule for next year, as we also consider the budget implications, um, and, and as we've uh, discovered, childcare is a very important issue as, as it relates to, to this as well. It's sort of another, um, another wrinkle, if you will, in, in that if students aren't in school every day, um, and, and parents need to go back to work, you know, how are we going to help support, support our families to the best of our ability? So um, we know these things are issues. Um, there have been multiple uh, sort of examples from local districts as to what they're thinking, uh, but we'll, we'll bring those in, in a more packaged fashion. Um, the idea is to hold six meetings with, uh, with the RAP committee um, to, to do it twice a week for the next three weeks, uh, starting June 1st, sorry, for, the, for three weeks uh, thereafter and then hopefully have a framework to bring to the board by the June 25th board meeting where uh, the board can consider, you know, a couple options as to what next year will look like. Uh, that'll give us a month of July and August to prepare facilities, um, staffing, be able to work with our, our partners at CSEA and WFA um, as we look to roll out next year. And, and, and on that note, I would like to thank uh, WFA and CSEA for their partnership through this very difficult time. Um, as I know, it's uncertain for them and, and challenging for them as well. Um, and just want to thank them. Uh, they've been true partners in this. So thank you, everybody. And uh, that's all for, for me today. All right. Thank you, Dr. Silvers. Uh, let's move to the minutes and I have a motion to approve the minutes of May 14th. I move to approve. Thank you. Second. A second. Thank you, Joanne. Can we uh, vote verbally or do we need to raise, uh, have a roll call, Wendy? It is roll call if I could call everyone's name. Mr. Ben Willows? Aye. Dr. Goldman? Aye. Ms. Caneda? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Mora? Aye. Motion carries. Let's go to 6.1 uh, to the uh, board policy for second reading and possible adoption. This is for the agreement with Hawthorne School moving to uh, just move to a different place, what we've already approved. Um, can I have a motion, please? Motion. Yep. motion. Thank you, Mr. Mora. Second. Thank you, Nelson. Any comments, questions? All in favor, Wendy, help us out. <laughs> Mr. Ben Willows? Aye. Dr. Goldman? Aye. Ms. Caneda? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Mora? Aye. Motion carries. 7.1, ratify proposal for Montgomery Hardware Company, provide doors and hardware for four classrooms 
at the Del Air School site. Uh, Dr. Silva, you want to give us just a quick heads up on this? Yes, uh, sir. I will, um, and I'm going to actually defer to Dave Wilson on this. But um, this is this has to do with our with um, adding more more opportunity for daycare and preschool at the uh, at the Del Air site. But Dave, I'll, I'll let you chime in on this one. So uh, when AYSO was was renting the space, they took out. Uh, so there should be two doors for each of the four classrooms. They took out one door and put plexiglass in there. So we had to replace those doors uh, so that they also were up to code on egress and ingress. And so that's what that was. They updated the doors and hardware. It came out very nice. Great. Unnecessary yeah. to meet the requirements. Yeah. Uh, can I have a motion, please? You have a motion, Neil. Thank you. I'll second. second. Thank you, Roger. All in favor, Wendy? Mr. Ben Willows? Aye. Dr. Goldman? Aye. Ms. Caneda? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Mora? Aye. Uh, action items fiscal 8.1, the resolution number 1920.22, adopting approving assignment of delinquent tax receivables. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson, for clarifying all of this and helping us understand that we actually win in this scenario at no cost. Uh, can I have a motion, please? I'll motion. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Moore. Uh, Wendy, all in favor? Mr. Ben Willows? Aye. Dr. Goldman? Aye. Ms. Caneda? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Mora? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, 8.2 miscellaneous receipts and purchase orders. Have a motion, please. I move to approve with a couple of questions. Thank you, Roger. I'll second. Thank you, Joanne. Roger? Okay. Um, first question, um, I see there is a, um, a reimbursement to a Wiseburn PTA for the cancellation of the Catalina trip. Can, can, you talk, can you share a little bit of information uh, with the board as to, um, well, I, I, I know the reason why, but I guess my, my question would be, is there a way we can get that money also refunded from the vendors uh, because there was no trip? So, so that's what this is. So uh, they've refunded all the parent paid prices. They didn't refund it to, to um, the Wiseburn PTA. They, they refunded it to Wiseburn Unified School District. This is us in turn reimbursing uh, it to the Wiseburn PTA account. Okay, thank you. Thank yes. you. I, I, I very much appreciate that clarification. I thought it would be pretty mean to not <laughs> go on the trip. And then on top of that, the Wiseman would have to pay it and the vendor retains the funds. Thank you for clarifying that that's not the case. <laughs> and, and I know Miss Ori, uh, with the help of uh, Sarah Moulton, has issued refund checks to all the parents as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my second question was on, there, there's an item listed for DSA closeout uh, of uh, phase two. Um, obviously, the, the amount is very significant, but it was to be expected because it was a large project. But are, are, is the project certified and closed out, or is this just the next step to file the paperwork? So phase two, I believe, and, and Dr. Shibbles could correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe phase two is now closed out. Um, and, and we're done with that. We still have phase one, an open liability that we're working through. I think it has to do with the um, fourth floor airflow. But my understanding is phase two is now DSA closed out. Okay. Uh, phase two, we've... we've and, uh, we, and we originally thought this was going to... I'm sorry? Go ahead, Dave. And we originally thought this, it, this uh, cost was going to be closer to $200,000. So at only one, $105,000, it's at much better. Yes, I, I, we would like to keep the 95,000. <laughs> so Dave, the only thing I would ask on this one is if once it's uh, finalized and closed, if you could follow up and keep within the uh, Wiseburn School District records, uh, DSA issues a, a, an actual closeout letter that I would like to ensure that we keep that in our files. There's a lot of liability with open uh, DSA projects uh, if they're not properly certified but also we could be hindered in the future if we have new projects and we don't have them fully certified. So this way we can avoid both of those situations. Correct, I'll, I'll check with uh, Annie tomorrow. Excellent, thank you. That, that's all I have. I would want to say too, Roger, just in, in that Annie Ung has been really instrumental um, in, in helping maintain this. And, and I really want to give a hats off to her because I know she didn't come into this in the construction business and really uh, 
has been diligent about about tracking this and, and we're happy to say that you know we've closed this project out and we'll get that the appropriate paperwork so that we have it on file for the board fantastic please thank annie for us absolutely uh, Dave, also, if I may, a uh, clarification on the Da Vinci. I think we got uh, significant dollars due to timing issues here. Uh, if you could clarify that for us, that would be helpful. Are these the in lieu taxes owed? Yes. So per Ed Code, um, you, the, the authorizing school district and the charter schools, they split up their ADA uh, in a prorated way. And so whatever property taxes we get from the local community, we have to then say we're 60% and they're 40%. We split those property taxes up, but whatever property taxes we send, the in lieu property taxes to Da Vinci, the state backfills that to us. So it's a it's a one to one. We're made whole through the state. Okay, great. And so Any these were just these were just all like the last three months of these in lieu property tax payments to Da Vinci. And can I can I clarify too? In a, in a recent meeting of Da Vinci, they've actually. Um, we had a we had agreed upon a an alternate schedule to pay in lieu the in lieu uh, funds to uh, to Da Vinci and now they've asked that we actually follow the the Ed Code and so it's going to be a little bit of a cash flow issue for us uh, but we know by us not following the the Ed Code that it was a cash flow issue for them so we we just have to to find that balance and and it is you know it's diligent of us to make sure we hit the Ed Code so uh, we're going to work with Dave and make sure our cash flow is right and and make right by them as well. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on six point, uh, I'm sorry, 8.2. All right, let's call the question. Wendy, all those in favor? Mr. Van Lulos? Aye. Dr. Goldman? Aye. Ms. Caneda? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Mora? Aye. All right, let's move to item nine, consent. Uh, can I have a motion for nine one and nine two, especially in lieu of Dr. Harbeck's explanation? earlier. You have a motion. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Go second. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Questions? None. Wendy, let's vote in favor. Ms. Mr. Benuelos? Aye. Dr. Goldman? Aye. Ms. Caneda? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Mora? All right, let's separate these due to our participant in the meeting in a moment. Uh, 10.1, accept resignations. May I have a motion, please? A motion. A second. Thank you both. Wendy, please. All in Mr. favor? Ben Will Mr. Benwell, excuse me. Aye. Dr. Goldman? Aye. Ms. Caneda? Aye. Mr. Martinez? Aye. Mr. Mora? Aye. Motion carries. This is a time when we want to celebrate opportunities to celebrate opportunities. So we're going to take that opportunity <laughs> to celebrate. Uh, Dr. Dougal, welcome. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're with us to hear this. And uh, we're thrilled to have you, as was mentioned by my cohort and colleagues earlier. Great to have you on board. Can I have a motion, please, to approve the Director of Student Support Services? I would love to motion that. I'll <laughs> second. Thank you both. <laughs> Comments, questions? Dr. Silvers, <laughs> you're, you're mute. There you go. <laughs> Roger, did you, I'm sorry, Roger. I can, did you want to go? Just really quickly, I just would like to congratulate and welcome uh, Dr. Dougal to the, to the district in this new role. We'd really look forward to working with you and, and also look forward to hearing from you in terms of uh, a service, ser providing services to our community and our students. So uh, welcome into, into the new role and thank you for your prior service at Dana as well. So thank you very much. Yeah. Th thank you, Roger. And I just want to, I also want to congratulate uh, Dr. Dougal for uh, for this position. I just want to thank her as well for, for what she's done uh, to help support us through not having a principal at the middle school for, for first part of the year. It's a, a tough job and um, you know certainly she stepped into that um, and, and exceeded our expectations and um, has since then worked on several other projects uh, as we've uh, wrapped up this school year and, and, and attempted to wrap up the school year. So thank, thank you very much uh, to Dr. Dougal for that. Looking forward to working um, with you, with her and uh, you know, uh, lots more to come and lots of lots of things. I know she's a person that believes in equity, believes in inclusion and, and should be able to move forward with with some of the programs that we've uh, uh, been so near and dear to us here in Wiseburn and our students. So thank you. All right. Congratulations and welcome. Indeed. Yes, welcome. 
Let's vote her in, guys. Uh, let's call the question. <laughs> Wendy, all in favor, please. Mr. Ben Willows. Aye. Dr. Goldman. Aye. Ms. Canada. Aye. Mr. Ben Willows. I'm sorry, Mr. Martinez. Can I vote twice? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Mora. Aye. Uh, so uh, does this mean, Dr. Ring, this is the last time you join us? Well, I was just going to comment, if possible, that I'm thr Kathy Waller and myself are just thrilled to be passing the baton soon to Nisha. Um, I have several weeks left, but we've been working diligently on our transition plan, and I'm thrilled that Nisha's coming on board and, and taking over, and I'm looking forward to working with her. Um, so I'll be seeing you, I think, one more meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you, Dr. Ring. Thank you, Dr. Dougal. Great to have you on board. Big shoes to fill. And Dr. Ring has graciously said she's really just around the corner. And we encourage I you to take advantage of that <laughs> all the time. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Um, May I share a few words before we move on? Yes, please. So first, just want to thank the Wiseburn trustees and Dr. Silvers for this opportunity. I'm really excited to be joining the team, you know, whole as, as a permanent member. Um, excited to continue the work we're doing. I truly do um, value coll a collaborative approach. I like to put our students first when we make decisions and also just the fact that we explore innovative approaches and practices. And so I'm excited that I get to be a part of that team. Um, I look forward to continuing the work we've been doing and also just truly honor that I've been selected. So thank you, thank you for the opportunity and um, I I'm excited to join, thanks. Again, welcome, we're thrilled to have you and continue to have. I believe that concludes our meeting, folks. Final comments, thoughts? Well, then we will adjourn this meeting and uh, thank everybody. We will resume close shortly. And uh, are there any final events or dates we need to share at this time, actually? Um, I just have the uh, upcoming board meeting for June that are listed on our agenda. Um, our next board meeting is Wednesday, June 10th. Um, the next one after that is Thursday, June 25th. And then we do have our regular budget meeting at this time on Monday, June 29th at 7.30 a.m. And Wendy, could I just add to, to that is our first uh, uh, reopening uh, partnership meeting is on June 1st. So uh, if two board members would like to, to pop in, we'll certainly send you the Zoom link so that um, feel free to, to join and uh, we'd love to have have you. So uh, what time is that? I, I would like to join that, Blake. What time is that? Uh, it's th three o'clock. It's from three to 4.30 on June 1st. Am I right on that? Did I get that the time right? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Blake, uh, I, I'll look at my calendar. I'd, I'd like to be a part of that too uh, as well. How about we send it to, I'll send it to you tomorrow so that way you have all the, all the dates and, and uh, we'd love to have you. Thank Perfect. you. So did you say only two board members? Yes, due to Brown Act, we okay. can only have two, two board mm. members. I'm happy to defer if somebody feels more desired. We can talk, Joe. We'll, 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 if you no, want no, to no, no, no. I, I, it's okay, Neil. I just was asking because we have a proposal. I'm, work is, yeah. Busy time. Mm -hmm. And, and jo Joanne, I may be able to like alternate with you or something like that too. I could certainly okay. think more about that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this is the only meeting we're having, right? There's six. Okay. Right, and then and, I'll probably be able to join another one. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and, and I, I have to be honest, I may not be able to commit to all six. So, <laughs> got it. Okay. All right, and we have two weeks left of school. I think our last board meeting is the day before school ends, so we're just about there. Okay. All right. Well, that concludes our meeting tonight. Uh, Mr. Moore, you want to say something? Just clarify uh, uh, what time? Eight oh five. Ten minutes. Sound good, to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. Thank this you. meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All. Thank you. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you.